The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 906 a.m. Tuesday morning. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and markets negative by eight. But you were lower overnight. S&Ps will kick things off. Yesterday, you accelerate to a price point. The lows yesterday, 3,600 on the dot at about 1 p.m. Eastern time. You accelerate even below that area last night. You were down to 3,584. So you were down about 40, 40 S&P points at one point at the lows. And that low, folks, was just about 6 a.m. Eastern time this morning. So only talking about three hours ago. Markets. Trading up from that point, you have the NASDAQ 100. You accelerate at 3 a.m. to 10,853. You were right back at that area at about 6 a.m. You were down to low 10,858. Since then, up almost 100 points in the NASDAQ 100. The Dow negative by 28 points right now. You are under 29,000. We got 28,946 in the Dow. Crude pulling back a bit from the highs of yesterday. Overnight, we see a drop off. At about 2.30 a.m. Eastern Time, you trade from 91 to 88.50. You're back right near $90 at 89.77. Gold, tough day yesterday. Action in currencies across the board. We have gold up $2 this morning, up about 10 bucks from where it was at about 6 a.m. Eastern Time. And we jump to notes and bonds right now. You get the 10-year. Actually trading below where you were yesterday morning. You talk about a drop-off, right? Notes and bonds, just volatility continuing in extreme ways. You get the 10-year right now, up seven ticks. You're basically right back to where you were kind of yesterday morning, right? There's 945. And now notes and bonds not trading in the U.S. yesterday, uh, I think. How's that play out when futures, I guess, are open, though, right? In some degree. But nonetheless, you're right back to that level. We trade from 110.21. I mean, look at the moves, man. From last night, 110.22, almost a full point. You trade up on the 10-year volatility continuing. And speaking of volatility, we jump over to the volatility index. Yesterday, 33.99, 33.16. Right now, we put this thing on a daily. Just looking at this calendar year, uh, making maybe a little bit of a double top here. The prior high from September 28th, 34.88. And we're climbing right now, 33.15. You see the prior highs, and that's just this year. January, about 39. February, almost 38. M May, when the market was accelerating lower, 36.64, and back at the June lows of the market, 35.05 on that volatility index. All right, let's jump around to some of the headlines. Tomorrow we get Fed minutes. Thursday we get the CPI number. All right. Uh, as I came on the air, one headline just to touch on real briefly, the IMF cutting the global growth forecast for the next year. They talked about inflation there as well. Uh, that news just out at 9 a.m., Global growth going to slow to 2.7% in 2023. And the quote that you may hear is, the worst is yet to come. And for many people, 2023 will feel like a recession. J.P. Morgan uh, CEO Jamie Dimon out there yesterday saying that he expects a recession next year. And let's talk some, well, let's talk some CPI uh, and let's talk some J.P. Morgan as well. We have CPI expected tomorrow uh, excuse me thursday cpi expected thursday fed minutes tomorrow and they're expecting some volatility man now when we got the last cpi okay and i'm going to jump around here for a moment because i think it was a 4.3 percent decline Okay, let's start back at the top. Uh, they're looking for potentially 5%, folks. This feels like another negative 5% day, and that's the team led by Andrew Tyler, wrote in a, load, wrote in a note yesterday, noting the S&P 500, yeah, there it is, dropped 4.3% on September 13th when August's inflation rating came in, reading came in hotter than expected. Now, they see potentially a 4 to 5% drop if you get a hot CPI number. Okay, the number that they're looking for, anything above the prior reading of 8.3 would be big trouble for the stock market. They're looking for 
the number to decline to 8.1. So the average expectation on Thursday is 8.1. The Fed minutes are going to matter tomorrow. But to put this thing on the chart and put what should be on your radar right now, there is September 13th, folks. We came into that price point at 41.63. Now, you could make the case that we are 15% below that number, okay, that the market's pricing in, that this is going to be a hot CPI number as is last one. There's a lot of volatility in both sides priced in. But what I've been saying before is back on June when the market was at 36.50, we got a big reprieve here because somehow people thought that the Fed was willing to pivot or not be as con strong with their convictions of hiking, uh, all misplaced as the markets accelerated lower. And if you said to market participants in June that these are the numbers we're going to be dealing with, these are the P CPIs that are, are going to be persisting, this is the jobs number, we're going to have unemployment drop into 3.5 percent, right? And the only hope almost at this point is that all of the lag and all of the delay of those rate hikes, which they're mattering. I mean, you have J.P. Morgan, uh, you have Jamie Dimon yesterday coming out and saying, you know, he expects a recession in the second quarter of next year. There's the lag, right? There it is. So maybe the market's priced in some of that. But boy, that was quite a reversal, folks, on that CPI number for the last month. And if we see anything resembling it this month, watch out. And crude is not, um, you know, we're... To take a look at crude, okay, we came into the month of September, because this is energy prices, at about $92. There's August 34, 1st, we come in actually at 88, okay? Final day of August, we trade lower. We kick off September with crude at about $89. And you traded lower almost the whole month, right, till September 27th. So energy prices should be beneficial in the month of September for the CPI numbers, okay? But just fast forwarding a little bit, I mean, you started off October at $80 on crude. Energy is going to be helpful for the current CPI number we're getting right now, even though that one still may be a tough one. What happens for the October CPI print, folks, when we have energy prices going from 80 bucks to 93.64 to 89, and we're 11 days into the month, rising prices yet again? It's going to be a persistent problem. Uh, I'm not sure how we get out of the realm of even three, four, five percent next year. Very difficult to imagine with crude prices. I've talked about shelter many times. So we get that number on Thursday and they're looking for 8.1 percent. They said anything below 7.9 or above 8.3 is going to be some big numbers. Uh, you could see a quote unquote buyer strike. Yeah, who's going to be buying the market, right? If you get a CPI print of 8.1 and 8.3, even higher. Are you going to step in on that day? I would not advise it. Now, Unsurprisingly, this is the data point I really want to get to, which is pretty cool, this chart. Data on inflation are exerting a huge influence on the stock market, plotting the S&P 500 performance against top 10 economic indicators such as payrolls, uh, GDP, okay, all the different, the, the 10 most valuable economic numbers that you get on, on a monthly basis, okay? Over the past decade, never have stocks been so negatively reactive to one economic indicator as they are now to the CPI. I would say stick with that trend until it changes, folks, okay? I would love to see some surprises where CPI is not as hot as they expected, um, but until I see them, probably gonna say that even at 3,600, folks, remember, we were at 3,600 in June. Things have not played out as the market had probably hoped over that time. Doesn't mean it's gonna happen on Thursday as well, but we're gonna ask our man Kevin Hicks when we come back, we'll talk to him coming up after the break. Stay tuned, folks. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&P futures down 13 points right now, trading at 36.12. Remember, overnight, your market's trading down to about 35.84, so still about 28 points above those overnight lows. Market negative by about one-third percent. Let's jump over to our man Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, 12 noon Eastern time, right here on Tiger TV, Fast Market, with your host, Kevin Hinks. Tom White, the team at TD Ameritrade Network, they have some great guests, folks. Every single day, they line up three trades, hypothetical, walk you through the option trades so you can understand how you can deploy those same exact strategies that they're using in this market. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. You know, a lot going on this morning already, and we're not even to the busiest part of the week. So, um Big news out there going around. J comments from Jamie Dimon. You've got the IMF. Uh, lowering global economic growth again. I, I think it's coming out right as a few minutes ago as we speak. So that's going down. You've got more China COVID problems. You've got uh, the NFIB small business report coming out. Jamie Dimon ma making comments overnight. Bank of England buying more bonds. There's a lot going on for, for a Tuesday, Tommy. And it's not going to stop, right, Kevin? We get Fed minutes tomorrow, and we get a big number for CPI on Thursday, man. I was reading, uh, speaking of Diamond, J.P. Morgan, I was reading on Bloomberg. They had a J.P. Morgan analyst just talking about maybe it could be a 5% day on the downside. If you really get a hot CPI print, if you get a low CPI print on Thursday, maybe you're talking about a 2 to 3% lift. Um, but they made the point, Kevin, and I'll ask you because I think it's a pretty reasonable point. I think you'd probably agree, but if we get – a hot CPI print. I mean, who are the buyers in this market? Because you just talked about Jamie Dimon, right? Saying, you know, next year feels rough. I was reading just before I came on the air, I think that IMF came out, revised growth across the board um, for all the, the normal reasons that we're used to. Where does the ability to, you know, become a, a buyer, Kevin, in the longer term, man, we're going to get CPI. And I guess we can just wait for those numbers to align. But I was talking about even now we have crude 
that's going to weigh on things potentially. Back to 90, 93 dollars. We were in the 78s range. Um, where do you see this playing out? I guess with Mr. Diamond's call next year, it seems pretty reasonable. These calls might start might lining up as we come into 2023. Yeah, here's what I've learned, Tommy, over a long career of trading. Looking too far out in the future is a bad idea because no one knows what the future is. No one, not even someone like Jamie Diamond with access to a lot of information. That's just his opinion that could easily change. And so what I would do is, Pay attention to this week's data and trade that data. Now, you can have an overall idea of a future three and six months from now, but it better be awfully flexible and dynamic and moving because the data is moving. Trade the data that you see right in front of you and what happens. And remember something. Look what happened overnight, Tommy. Markets were lower. Things were getting a little unstable, and the Bank of England stepped in. Remember that when that when when things get crazy, you're going to see the Fed, Bank of England step in to stabilize markets. So just when, when you think there's no one that can buy it, there will be someone to buy it. And so I, I'm a big believer in trading the data now looking too far in the, in the distance for what the economy is going to do is a fool's errand. So. Stay, you know how you eat an elephant, Tommy? One bite at a time. It's Just great advice, man. It makes me think. Today. It's, it's great advice. Uh, and even, you know, I was looking at um, just even like fixed income, retirement-wise, right? And now this is my own personal opinion. Um, staying current, man, not going out too close, right? Everyone's talking about shorter duration. For me personally, Kevin, it just makes me think of what you're talking about. I'm staying real close, man, so I can change things potentially because things could just move so rapidly. Even in that fixed income, folks, in my opinion, even where yields are where they are, Kevin, you don't know, as you just said, man, nobody knows where we're going to go, especially right. when you start going out um, years. So great point. So we'll I mean, stay current never, with Tommy. You just never know what can come. I mean, let's face it, where we are right now in the war in Ukraine with Russia, it could break significantly in either direction. Frankly, you could see a, a severe escalation or you could see something break in Russia. And, and, a, and a tone change there. So there are so many. I've learned that when you set your expectation, do you think you have it figured out? Careful there. Yeah, anyone that tells you they got it all figured out, folks, spikes up big time because nobody's got it all figured out. You might have right. an educated, reasonable opinion, right, Kevin? Um, anyway, I'm saying that's that's it's great points, man. So we'll stay current. We'll go to Thursday, Kevin. Uh, they're looking for 8.1 percent, right? The last number was 8.3 yep. percent. Uh, we got a VIX right now hovering around 32. The rule is 16. Uh, if the VIX, folks, is 16, it's one out of three days. You're expecting a 1% move. At 32, that'd be one out of three days. You're looking for about a 2% move. I bring it up, Kevin, because we have the CPI in three days and a 2% move. Yep. What's your take on the volatility as we come into Thursday with the VIX trading about 33 right now? You know, it's, it's often that I say this. But a 32 or now 33 VIX is justified based on everything going on in the world and where we are in this market. This elevated level of VIX is completely justified. So, yeah. I, that, That's pretty cool. Know, it's, I, I make I've the seen point. higher VIX in my career. So a lot of traders haven't, but I have, Tommy. It's, you know, I bring up the rule of 16, Kevin, because I was going through it and I read um, on the front page of Bloomberg this morning just talking about J.P. Morgan analysts and saying, you know, maybe we could get a huge down day like we saw in the last cpi print september 13th when we got the august numbers um of four to five percent you know if we get a, a soft cpi number maybe we'll get a rise of two percent and i said well geez you're getting five percent or you're getting two percent the vix is only for factor in two percent that seems like it might be a bargain deal uh with that in mind kevin we got some earnings going on this week as we come into the bank earnings on friday but everything else going on what are you guys talking about at 12 today on fast market so we're going to talk about consumer staples with Pepsi coming out before the open tomorrow morning. So the feature name will, will, will be PepsiCo. We're deciding whether we should go all liquids like Coke and Monster Beverage or should we go Procter & Gamble and Clorox. So we're definitely going to talk about consumer staples. Pepsi will be the focus today. It's just a matter of what, what which one's the other two that, that, that we choose. We're really basing it on like Folio's data. If, 
craft a beverage, then we'll do beverages. If they go consumer staples more broader, then we'll go the bigger names, consumer staples. But it's definitely consumer staples day that we're looking at, Tommy. And boy, it's quite a pullback across the board, man. Pepsi, solid company from 181 down to 161. This one chopping around this year. And folks, you want to check this out. Because, Kevin, you are familiar with Pepsi. For those not familiar, was it were you were a market maker in the pit with Pepsi? Were, were we? I was I was a market maker and the specialist in PepsiCo. I traded it basically from 1986 to 2005. I traded Folks, PepsiCo. That is a lesson of experience that you and I and, you know, you can't get without the time. I'm going to be watching, Kevin. Thank you so much for taking the time, as always, this morning, man. And we look forward to the program at 12 today. And we'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks for having me out, Tommy. Have a great day. Always a pleasure. Folks, check it out every trading day. I've learned so much from the program. Uh, if you want to get into options, if you just want to understand options, to understand how they're priced, how the premium is priced into it, how they move, check out the program at 12. And you heard it, and I've heard Kevin talk about it many times, folks. Uh, like I said, like you understand, you know, that type of history, that type of experience, being in the pit, um, being a specialist in that one equity, you want to check out that program. I'm going to do my best to check it out at 12. And with that, folks, we got the S&Ps down about 18 right now, trading 36.07. Uh, off the lows, but trailing a bit. We got about three minutes to go until the opening bell. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps down 19 points on the open right now, 36.06. NASDAQ 100, negative by about 59. Dow off 93 points. All the markets well off the lows you had last night. Bitcoin, 19,055 right now. Crude, down a buck 89 from where you were yesterday, putting crude back on a daily. As I was mentioning, right, we make a low basically coming right into the month of October. In terms of you come into October at the price of $80, folks. Remember that, because that's going to matter, man, once you get the October numbers. Uh, energy prices should be an, eased, an easing number compared to where we were in August. Now, remember, you're getting September numbers for, excuse me, yes, September numbers is what we get on Thursday for CPI, okay? And we came into September at a price point of about $90, and you traded down to $76 throughout the month. So you're going to see some easing crude prices, energy prices for the month of September, uh, already fast forwarding to the next print. We'll see. But guess what? As Kevin Hicks said, stay current, folks. Stay in the near term because if you start trying to go out, especially in this market, very difficult because the, the numbers are just so off where even the best analysts have been. Even somebody like Jamie Dimon, you know, doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen in the second quarter of next year. Uh, interesting to hear that already the talk of the Fed coming back in from Kevin Hinks, but that is how quickly it would be, right? As in, if things really get that bad, folks, right? You saw the Bank of England. If things really do get that bad, at least to the Fed's credit, at least, okay, we should have gotten off zero a long time ago, folks. We couldn't bite the bullet. You're not supposed to be running a 0% interest rate as you have the markets doing what they did basically since when? 2000, 2008, you know, that or thereabouts, um, that whole area. You don't want to have that happen so that you have the ammunition to go the other way, as in you have the ammunition to cut when you need it. Well, we're going to have some ammunition to cut because we're probably going to get rates near 4.5% at least before, giving the Fed ample room to cut if they need to to bring things down. Maybe we're going to get even higher. Right? That is the possibility for sure. Okay, let's jump around and see what else we have going on. It is Prime Day, so interesting headlines. Always headlines, man. Amazon, there's no such thing as bad press, right? I guess when they're out there talking about Prime Day, they're talking about a warning. Guess what? I said, oh, yeah, that's, that's right. It's Prime Day. Maybe I'll have to check out if they have anything good. Meanwhile, it's a Prime Day warning. Some discounts, maybe price hikes. Study shows pretty good, right? You call the sale, you increase the price, and people say, I have to buy it now so I don't miss out on the offer. Um, and yeah, I, I'm not sure how I feel about this one, man. This is obviously pertinent to the times that we're in. Excess inventory, uh, slowdowns of the economy. You're going to see the sales going into the holiday season. As they're worried about the holidays, they're going to try and front load that. Worried about the holiday season, what are they going to do? Get ahead of your competition, man. It does make sense. Get ahead of the competition because people are only going to have X amount of dollars to spend, especially right now with inflation rising. Get those sales early before people realize they get late in the holiday season and they potentially want to um, tighten up their purses and their wallets for whatever reason it may be, necessary or not. Uh, so today, they're hosting the second big sale exclusively for Prime members. This is a Prime early access sale. It's almost like an SNL skit, right? As in you have a sale once or twice a a year, uh, one, every once, every one or two months, you have a sale, and somehow you just name it something different. We had Prime Day, then we have Early Access Sale. Then we're, what are you getting early access to? You're getting early access to the next Prime Sale. Uh, but some of the deals advertised on the site may not be what they appear. So here's a cool uh, tip, folks, when you're on there. This site. CamelCamelCamel.com. I've used it forever, folks. It's a it's a great URL. I'll enter it into the Tiger's Den so you can check it out, okay? CamelCamelCamel.com. And what you do is any Amazon product you go to, let's just go to Amazon.com and we'll search for a kid's bike, all right? Or no, we'll just pull up anything. We'll pull up, uh, all right, let's, no, I don't want to pull up a Peloton. They don't deserve the free press. Uh, let's, let's, see, let's see what this hat is pushing. Okay, you got a Vineyard Vines classic whale logo cap. What do you do? You copy the URL, folks. You bring it over to Camel, Camel, Camel. You enter that URL right in there. You search it, and it's going to show you the entire price history for that cap. Now, they're probably not priced. So it's been $28, has not budged since April 7th to October 11th. And what are they offering uh, today? 24 bucks. So it is a legitimate sale marked down from 28 It's never been on sale before. Uh, it's a great tool to understand the entire pricing history of a product on Amazon. Um, so for context, even better than that, let me see if I can product find a product because most products are going to have 
you know, a dip when it's last primed at Nordic track. Let's see if this thing has some good sales. Let's see. Now, this is where you really want to pay attention. You're buying something for $551. We'll copy the URL. We'll enter it in up here. That's all you do. You search it. Yeah, and so there's some history for you. So you see the dips, right? This thing has dipped down on certain days to as low as about 447 Looks like the price, 447 What are they offering for it today? 551 Oh, that's not too good of a deal. See that, folks? Nordic track. You got to time it. It's 551 but look at this. There's been many instances that this thing has somehow shot down to the area of 447 for, for various reasons. Uh, all right, I'm not going to click there. But you get the point. It's a great tool and interesting. This is the press that Amazon's getting right now. Uh, and the research they're talking about, they track prices for nearly 15,000 products. And this is going so far back, though, which is why I would just bring up that camel, camel, camel. It was an easy segue. Um, and, yeah, not surprising, right, that all sales are not the same, not sales at all. Camel, camel, camel. It shows you. They, I, I just look up everything I'm doing. You know, whether, you know, if you're buying something for 12, 13 bucks, but you're ever buying something for the Nordic track, right? You see that? Oh, what a bargain. It's it's less than 100 bucks off. Well, guess what, man? You know, it's been 612, too. Check that out. So there's they're calling it list price is 649, right? This thing ain't 649. This thing is 612 all day last year into January, all right? Inflation got you up to 649. This thing was priced at 612 for the better part of the year. Not sure who is paying the spikes up there, but nonetheless, uh, you see the dips on big sales, et cetera. All right, what else do we have pulled up? We talked about the rule of 16. Uh, so I was Googling it. What pops up? A nice informational URL from who? TD Ameritrade, uh, think or swim. Here's the rule of 16, folks, if you have not heard it. We'll check in on the VIX, okay? We get the market down about 55 right now. You get the volatility index, CBOE volatility index based off S&P premium for puts and calls. 33.54, and the way that you want to understand how this is pricing and what type of moves is, when the VIX is at 16, as I stated with Kevin, it's expecting a 1% move about one out of three days, okay? When you go to 32, you double the VIX, you double the percentage move you're expecting every one out of three days. So right now, we're right near about 32. It's expecting a 2% move every one out of three days, okay? Uh, if you're at 24, 1.5% move. Now, it's interesting because, as I stated with Kevin, I don't think that's that bad right now. With the volatility that potentially comes down the line on, on CPI on Thursday, but here's the mental calisthenics you got to go through, folks, okay? If it was that easy, everybody would be doing it, all right? Volatility is fairly high. You put this thing on a daily basis, okay? You go back to the beginning of the calendar year when we begin getting all the volatility. Haven't seen the VIX much higher than this. Okay, 35, 36, 37, and 38. We made it to a high recently of 34.88 on September 28th. Uh, for what it's worth, at least you understand it, folks, and that's when you get to make the opinion, right? Uh, do you think the market might trade more than that? Well, you can pay for the premium then because the premium's only pricing in a 2% move one out of three days and CPI's on Thursday. Do you think that's too much? You can be the one selling the premium if you want to or vice versa. Market sliding a bit, S&P at 3,600. Stay tuned, folks, we'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, 
target prices and stops the set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps negative by 27, just under 3,600 right now. I'm going to take this Fibonacci off there because that's not needed anymore. Basically, a full retrace of the acceleration you had higher. Backing this thing out again. Excuse me. Pretty critical area, right? We come down on October 3rd to 3,571. You're looking at five red days. Take us from 3,800 to 3,597. We come into the CPI print on Thursday morning. And hold on to your hats, man. And we got Fed minutes tomorrow as well. And we get some earnings this week as well. Other news out there, Google selects Coinbase, so Coinbase. We'll jump over to them in a moment to take cloud payments with cryptocurrencies and we'll use its custody tool over there for Coinbase. I would be very careful in this one, folks, even though you have Coinbase up today when you get the S&Ps down about 28 points. Coinbase up $1.152, but folks, take a look at this chart, which is why I bring it up, right? That's a three-year weekly. It goes public at 429. When does it go public, folks? April of 2021, okay? Do you remember where Bitcoin was trading at in April of 2021? Yeah, that's when it first got to 65,000. Uh, God bless them for getting it back above that price point to 69,000 after trading down to 30,000. And then the air comes out, folks. And where it is this bar we're talking about? You got to go back almost five years, folks. A five-year weekly futures start trading in December of 2017. Bitcoin under that price point, almost five years later, Coinbase goes public right near all time highs in April of last year. And then we put it back to Coinbase, folks. Uh, yeah, I would be very careful even on deals like that for Coinbase profiting. Coinbase was making a lot of money, folks, in trading. The trading in crypto has just dried up dramatically. Just take a look at Robinhood for a similar chart. From 85 bucks on the IPO, that's a weekly, all right? You were up there for some time, man. But yeah, you've been trading at basically 10 bucks since January of this year, 10.16 for Robinhood, off the lows of 6.81. But both those companies are making so much money off trading. I saw something today about an NFT, a non-fungible token, uh, that one of the Paul brothers, Logan Paul, I think, bought, or one of them that's into crypto, and it said something, and it was pretty much a clickbait article, I think. I didn't click on it but it makes sense in the times man uh that they bought an nft for like six hundred and eighty five thousand bucks and now it's worth ten dollars yeah nfts are making a lot of money on those as well so i would stay away from coinbase even though they're making some deals all right we talked about earnings american airlines they're out with their numbers uh jumps after raising third quarter revenue forecast revenue in the three months ended september 30th up 13 percent from the same period in 2019 so that's the interesting one right compare it to 2019 in terms of where you were we'll jump over to the airlines they're getting a lift american up one percent as the markets are down but there's your volatility man it gives it back on the open ouch let's jump over to some of the others delta oh, 
so much for that short-lived uh, joy. Delta back actually now in the red after getting some positive news in the airline industry. We'll go to United. Similar deal in the red by a third percent United as they drop out. Look at that. United just trade down almost $2 on the open. Uh, let's see. Domestically, Southwest, they trade lower as well. Man, these airlines. JetBlue down about half a percent. We jump over to Cruises. This will be a good segue. Uh One argument you could make for Carnival is that it's shopping around at the lower portion of the trend line that it's been in. And that trend line, folks, goes back. Let's back it up. Yeah, to basically the highs this thing was in where it was at 25 to 30 bucks about a year and a half ago. June of last year, you've been trading lower, bouncing around near the lows. Would not be buying this thing for the long term. But if you are looking for a little bit of a trade, potentially. And Norwegian. Had an upturn channel, breaks out of it. Norwegian, a little bit closer to the top of the portion of its channel line versus Carnival. Now, that's a good segue into uh, one ship that is not on the Carnival fleet of vehicles, I believe, and that is the Ritz-Carlton Super Yacht. So check this out. Uh, a first look. This thing is three years delayed, but it's coming live now. And, yeah, it would make sense that you have some elite yachts. Why not, right? They have plenty of elite hotels. It's going to set sail for the first time this month. Uh, who's the biggest investor? Oak Tree Capital. <laughs> All right. Uh, big Wall Street money, of course, or something like this. Uh, it was stalled construction. The pandemic exacerbated supply chains, et cetera. It holds 298 passengers, uh, and it's going to cruise from Barcelona to Nice on October 15th. Later this week, they can watch your kids. Uh, I read down here for 45 bucks. There you go. Uh, supervised Ritz Kids program in its own playroom, 45 bucks for a three-hour session. You want a non-surgical facelift? No problem. They'll take care of that for $395. Can't make this stuff up, folks. Uh, but nonetheless, interesting as uh, premier yachting takes place. And I wonder what the cost would be, right? Not going to be cheap. That would be my... Yeah, they don't have the price in here. Of course they don't. But nonetheless, it comes. All right, what else do we have pulled up here? Yeah, talking about J.P. Morgan, back to this article real quick. Uh, this was the part of the article I was talking about to kick off the program. If you weren't listening, I was talking about the CPI. J.P. Morgan's talking about big volatility coming down the line on Thursday. Could even be a negative 5% day if things are hot on the inflation trend. Uh, if we get a low number, okay, you could see the S&P potentially rise one to two is what they talk about. But the data point that I like they're looking at is against the top 10 economic indicators, okay? You're talking about GDP, you're talking about payroll, CPI, one of them, of course, uh, retail sales, right, jobless claims. CPI, year over year, look at the decline we're talking about, folks. That's correlation of economic surprises versus consensus in S&P returns for the top 10 economic indicators, and that's over a 10-year period, and CPI, by far, the economic surprise to the downside, bigger than any other of the 10 economic indicators. And I would not buck that trend until the data proves it. Kevin made some great points saying, what do you do, man? What do you do? How do you look forward? You look forward and you stay current. Because if you can just figure out what's happening in the next two or three months, folks, boy, you will be so far ahead of the game. And that one is as difficult as ever right now. All right, let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks as this market just continues to melt. Amazon. On their early access Prime Day sale, down 2.3% to kick things off. Microsoft shares down 1.4%. You look at Microsoft, man. We're coming back to the 618 of the entire move higher from COVID. 132 up to 350. You're back to almost 215 from Microsoft. Uh, Google, they're under the 50% as well. You're down a little bit today for Google at 98.54. We jump over to Tesla. Not sure what that Fibonacci number is. We'll take that one off. But Tesla... Down to 222 bucks, and yeah, my dad was talking about this yesterday. Basically, lost what 90 bucks in the period of a few weeks, right? Yeah, from 90. Yeah, even let's go back 20 days. Yeah, there it was, from September 21st. Three weeks, this thing loses 30 percent. I don't know how he gets away with it, folks. Any other CEO playing games with Twitter and taking uh, the attention up that you have on that level? I I don't think that they would deal with that one. It's a tough one. All right, jumping around. S&P right now, negative by 27. And we do. We got a caller. We got a caller, Michael from Ormond Beach. Michael, good morning. Thanks for hanging on the line. What can I do for you, man? Hey, Tommy, I've heard you and your dad talk about uh, a number of times the, uh, is it USTreasuryDirect.org 
where they had the I bond that's 12 months. Could you possibly give us the correct contact information for them? Sure, the we'll pull it up. Uh, we'll pull it up after number, the break, folks, time. and we'll take a look at it. So you're talking about I bonds. I think it's 9.62%, folks. That rate guaranteed right. through this month. TreasuryDirect.gov is what it is, Michael. We'll talk about it right uh-huh. when we get back. Stay with us. Stay tuned, folks. I'll pull it up. You should check this out as well. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps down 31 points. That's almost 9 tenths percent in the red right now. Trading at 35.94. NASDAQ 100, you're off 1.1 percent. The Dow off one quarter percent right now at 29,178. We're talking to Michael from Ormond Beach, and he had a great question, folks, about Series I bonds. Uh, so, Michael, the website, to kick things off, most importantly, is treasurydirect.gov. Now, you can just search for these. They're Series I bonds like inflation, okay, I-bonds, folks. And I'm just at the website right now, treasurydirect.gov. If you scroll down, it's right on their homepage, okay, Series I savings bonds. You jump over to this. Now, to understand it, this rate is locked in for six months when you purchase those I-bonds, okay? They reset right. the rate on November 1st. So you have, and they do it twice a year, Okay, so you have until October 31st, folks, if you want to purchase these, you can purchase up to $10,000 per a person 
per a calendar year. Okay, so you could do one for you, one for your wife if you wanted to, uh, up to 10,000, whatever it is, people in the house, children as well, I believe. Uh, and then a new calendar year, you can set another. You need to hold them for at least a year. Okay, there's no penalty after five years, but the only penalty if you take them out after a year. So let's say, Michael, you buy them right now, you take them out after a year. You give back mm -hmm. three months of interest, okay? So you give back about a quarter of the year's interest. Well, at almost 10% right now, folks, 9.62, not even a bad deal. If you take it back out in 12 months, you give back a quarter of that, you're still talking about, what, 7%, something like that. So it's a great right. deal. I bring it up, and I'm sure you've heard about it, Michael, this month, because they do res reset that rate. Uh, it's based off some form of the CPI, folks, the inflation part of it, part of it uh, on changes in the non-seasonally adjusted consumer price index for all ur urban consumers um, is how that's done. But it's locked in for six months as a fixed rate, and you get that rate for six months. So even if you buy it sometime this month, you get that rate for six months, and then they compound it. Um, and I'm not sure for each minor child. It might be $10,000, though, Johnny. So check it out, man. Um, there are ways to do that. And these have always been around, folks, but these numbers have never been this high. And you can keep it in there for 30 years if you want to as that rate gets reset. Michael, thanks so much for calling, man. You have a great one. Folks, thanks so much for tuning in. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. We got volatility. S&P's down 33. Basil's up next, folks. Stay tuned. Have a great Tuesday.